अंडरस्टैंड द डिफरेंस बिटवीन एंडोक्राइन ग्लैंड एक्सोक्राइन ग्लैंड वर्सेज अ हेट्रोक्राइन ग्लैंड सो हेट्रोक्राइन ग्लैंड वी वुड कम इन अ वाइल लेट्स फर्स्ट अंडरस्टैंड द डिफरेंस बिटवीन अ एंडोक्राइन ग्लैंड वर्सेज अ एक्सोक्राइन ग्लैंड सो द डिफरेंस इज वेरी वेरी सिंपल वी हैव वेरी सिंपल एनिमेशन टू हेल्प यू अंडरस्टैंड इन द फर्स्ट सिस्टम एज यू कैन सी वी हैव द secretions which are poured directly into the blood vessels as you can see the circles revolving here this is an example of endocrine why endo means within so the secretions are released directly within the blood and since the secretions are directly released into the blood there is no requirement for any ducts and therefore these secretions are ductless as we have seen here however on the other hand we do have exocrine glands the word exo means outside so since it is a exocrine gland what is the idea the secretions are released as you can see here through the ducts and the secretions are released out and this is an example of exocrine glands sweat gland a very common example of an exocrine gland so sweat is released outside and therefore we call this as an exocrine gland so this is one of the basic difference that we understand between the exocrine versus the endocrine glands let's move on to each of these differences one by one in detail so as the first difference we understood all already endocrine glands are ductless however exocrine glands have ducts that means the secretions of an endocrine gland are released directly into the blood stream however that is not the case with the exocrine glands they are poured into the cavity by certain ducts and therefore these are called as exocrine glands the next important difference is endocrine glands as we have understood in endocrine system they have prolonged effect the effect is long lasting because the message travels very very slowly and since the message travels slowly the effect remains for a longer duration exocrine gland you go out for a rigorous exercise and you do your workout you do your exercise and it's all sweating so that's for a brief period you return back everything turns out to be normal so sweat glands we can take as a very simple example to understand each of the characteristics of exocrine gland so exocrine glands the effect remains for a shorter duration however endocrine glands have prolonged impact but the secretions of endocrine glands are very very small so the quantity the proportion of secretions is relatively very less in endocrine gland and why it is less the answer again is very simple because they are uh, they are, they secrete directly into the blood stream so even a small amount is sufficient however exocrine glands large amount of secretions is done and this is mainly because the secretions is by the duct a small change in the amount of secretion would cause no disorder so one day you work out more other day you work out less one day you might have higher proportion of sweat other day you can have lower proportion of sweat but that won't lead to a disorder but the endocrine secretions are so important that even a minor change in the amount of secretion in the body can lead to significant disorders iodine deficiency is a common example we would understand each of the glands in to detail but just to cite here we have iodine as a common example a very minor amount of iodine is added in the salt so i want you to go back today and take out one of the salt packets in your home and see whether it is iodized salt and if it is an iodized salt how much proportion of iodine is there in a packet of 1 kg or 500 grams you would be surprised to understand how a small amount of iodine is required and if this small amount changes this can even lead to disorders now as mentioned in an endocrine gland the secretions are the hormones since they are hormones they are chemical messengers and they 
affect the target cell so all of the control is done by a feedback mechanism that means let's say my body runs sugar deficient so i would have higher amount of sugar secretions in the body and body would automatically try to cope up with the sugar deficiency that the body is suffering from and this is what is known as a feedback mechanism so there is a continuous feedback mechanism and this is governed by chemical messengers exocrine glands are secretions that act as catalyst that means they enhance the rate of reaction or the way in which the reaction progresses secretions of digestive juices are again good examples of exocrine gland so we have certain common examples that we have here exocrine gland salivary uh, salivary glands sweat glands mammary glands gastric glands then we have intestinal glands as some of the common examples of exocrine endocrine thyroid pituitary adrenal pancreas ovaries testes are common example now you might ask we did a term which was heterocrine what is this heterocrine we have not discussed we just introduced this word prior so heterocrine glands are those glands which have a capability to function both as exo and endocrine glands the best example we can give is pancreas so pancreas are a unique gland which are endocrine as well as exocrine and i was rather wondering why didn't you pointed out this question that we have written pancreas in both the categories and that's why the reason is they are both exocrine as well as endocrine other good example of heterocrine glands is gastric mucosa so gastric mucosa which is released by the intest uh, the walls of the stomach is again a heterocrine gland and then we have placenta as another example of heterocrine gland so these are some of the heterocrine glands three important heterocrine glands and the differences that exist between the endocrine glands versus the exocrine glands